Hi, this is Rodney Dangerfield. I don't get no respect, but today, I've got a secret. From the Broadcast Center in New York City, here is I've Got a Secret. And the host of I've Got a Secret, Bill Cullen. Thank you very much. Hi there, panel. What a nice to Thank you. Thank you, and welcome to a brand new edition of I've Got a Secret. And speaking of brand new, we have a brand new panel all set and I hope ready to go. First, we have brand new Elaine Joyce. Next, spanking new Richard Dawson. Then, shiny new Pat Collins. And finally, practically new Henry Morgan. And that's our panel. Yes, sir, Henry, you're as new as they come. <laughs> but... A little used, a little used. Welcome to Richard, Elaine, Pat, happy to have you. You all ready to play this yep. foolish yeah, game? Yeah, yeah. we're ready. If you are ready, then so are we. May we meet our first contestant, please. <laughs> okay, Bob. Now, you see, we have our first contestant finally assembled here. Uh, will each of you please tell us who you are and where you're from and how old you are? Go ahead, right in there. My name is Michelle Bannabee. I'm 13, and I live in Western Connecticut. Good boy. Paul Schweitzer. I'm 26. I live in New York City. John Mimikos. I'm 12 years old, and I'm from Teaneck, New Jersey. My name is Jill Albert. I'm 11 years old, and I come from Manhattan. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Anthony Spano. Where do you come from? Beautiful spot, Anthony. <laughs> and, and, and you, sir? I'm Bob Duane, I'm 17, and come from Jericho, New York. Okay, Anthony, make yourself at home. We want you to have a good time. You like it here so far? Oh, you yeah, little change. Panel, we, we brought these six people together for a reason. They're grandmothers. Now, their six grandmothers, I'll tell you this right now, have been studying the same subject in the same class for the past three years. Now, if you'll all whisper to me, we'll show the audience at home what your grandmothers have been learning in school. Did you go along with that, Anthony? No. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a unanimous vote. Nick. Panel, their secret concerns something uh, about their grandmother's educational background. We'll begin the questioning with Pat Collins. Pat? Oh, you had to do this, <laughs> you, um You all look very healthy, and you also look well fed. So I don't guess that your grandmothers are studying how to cook. No. 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 Uh, the class that they're in, is it uh, a credit uh, or a degree candidacy class? No. 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 Will the class enable them to do something that they have not been able to do before? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Are you all for their doing this? Yes. 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 Will it help you out? No. 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 <laughs> no, we have one down and three to go in Henry Morgan. Three years? Um, is it a four-year course? <laughs> no. <laughs> do they go forever? Yes. yes. Yeah, no, I guess, Henry, until I get tired of learning this stuff. I mean, I don't know if, he, if one ever masters this. Let's put it that way, Henry. Oh. <laughs> oh, he said blankly, for indeed he was. <laughs> <laughs> what can you go to school for? I know people are supposed to be learning their whole lives, but do they go, do they have to travel any distance to go to this school? No. 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 Do they all show up together in school? Yes. yes. They do? Yes, they, they do or they, they, they do not. They do not have to, but most of the time, I guess they all get there about the same time. Is it what I think of as school? Is there an instructor, somebody who stands there? And yes. Yes. yes, an instructor. Boy, oh boy, yes. Two down and two to go. Elaine Joyce. Oh, Henry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Now, um, are, do, do all, each one of you know the other person's grandmother? Yes. 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 But, yeah. I mean, not, it's not that you're friends. No, that, that. No, that's has not nothing important, to do with it. No. All right, now, does this have that, something to do with uh, homemaking? No. 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 Does it have anything to do with uh, living your, making your life uh, better? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. Making it I'm, easier? Uh, well, easier, I don't know, but better depends on for whom. Oh. Are you, oh. 
another time you pushed me down the staircase. Big help for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, now, they go to class. Do they go in the afternoon in a regular school with regular people who are young children or any age? Does it, I mean, are the people all older? Not, no, no, not all older. I think these grandmothers are unique in that sense. They're the oldest in their group, or generally. I see. Now, does it have anything to do with the art of loving? They're learning about loving? <laughs> no. Or no? Uh, well, yeah, they say yeah. no, but being older and more experienced, I would say indirectly. Indirectly? <laughs> Thank, you oh! the, Thank you for the double buzz. Three down. Go ahead, Richard. I really and don't. one to go, Richard. It's <laughs> in your lap, to put it loosely. <laughs> Anthony. That's you. <laughs> okay. Does your grandmother... Do, does she wear a special uniform at all to go for this no. stuff? <laughs> Anthony, would you let me finish the question? <laughs> now, Rappo. <laughs> just, uh, all wear normal clothes, right? No. No, no. No matter what Anthony says, Richard, no, they don't wear normal clothes. Oh, they do not wear normal they clothes? They do not, no. All right, is it uh, an activity uh, underwater? <laughs> no, no. no. Well, it's Very, certainly yeah, something to go <laughs> Is it self-defense? No. 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 Panel, I'm going to tell you right now, time is up and they stumped you. It is not every kid in this world who can boast that his grandmother is studying belly dancing. Because that's <laughs> We're not going to ask you to take our word for this. They've been studying belly dancing for the past three years or so, and they're here with us to demonstrate their skill. Now, you ready for this? Now, we'd like you to meet, first of all, their teacher from the Serena Studios here in New York. We give you, or lend you for just a moment, Christine Busini. Christine. <laughs> and whose grandmother are you? Uh, Christine, it's so good to see you. <laughs> and it's getting better all the time. How come you have grandmothers in your class? Well, not only is belly dancing a lot of fun, but it's a great form of exercise, and it really keeps you in shape. It certainly does. It exercises all the parts. Would you, would you care to introduce the ladies to us? Yes. All right. Over here we have Blanca Warner, Joyce Ramona. Hi, Joyce. Irene Morad. Hi, Irene. Ethel Sagoda. Ethel. Kiki Hanos Kiki. and Christine Mimikos. Oh, what a nice. <laughs> what a. Nothing like. Ethel, Ethel Sagoda, that is you in the middle. Is that right, Ethel? May I ask you a personal question? You may. All right, Lloyd, could you get, could you get a close up of Ethel? I want you to get a good look because I'm sure the uh, answer will astound you. Ethel, how old are you? 75. <laughs> 75. Come on. Ethel, Ethel, honestly now, how old, how old are you really? Really? Yeah. 76. <laughs> I guess, I guess the only way we're going to prove to you that this has all come to something other than naught is to demonstrate with a performance. So we give you Serena's gyrating grandmas. Ladies, if you would, Serena. Right 
after this message for you. May we uh, have our next contestant, please? Welcome, sir. Would you kindly tell us your name and where you're from? Yes, I'm E.D. Mitchell, and I'm from Palm Beach, Florida. Now, panel, this is Dr. Mitchell. He has a secret. If you whisper it to me, doctor, we'll show it to the audience. A little bit of a clue here, panel. It concerns something he did. We start the questioning with Elaine Joyce. Uh -huh. Something you did. Okay, now does this have anything to do with the fact that you are, you are a doctor? That's peripheral. Meaning that that's part of it? Yeah, possibly. I think, I, yeah. Possibly. I think, no, I, I think that's safe. But How long ago did you do this? A little over four years. And I think, Elaine, I'll say he did not have to be a doctor to do this, but the fact that he was a doctor contributed. Hmm? Yes, Okay. Did absolutely. it help you, the fact that you were a doctor doing this thing? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. I see. Does it, uh, does it, do you do something with people? Uh, no, not in this instance. Oh. Do you, do you make somebody better? No. <laughs> Except me. Yeah, not, not per se. No one was improved aside from... Oh, and stop And again, it. Richard, it's one down and three to go. And Richard, before you begin, again, his being a doctor, he could have done this without being a doctor. Okay. I, I just want to make that... Right. Go ahead, Perfectly Richard. clear. Perfect. I was afraid <laughs> if I did that, that'd impeach me. Uh, Richard. Dr. Mitchell, uh, this thing you did, was it a service? In a sense, it was a service. Was it something you did to yourself? No. Did you do it to someone else? No. no. Didn't was... do it to anyone, Richard, just something he accomplished. Something you accomplished. Did it make newspapers? Was yes, it... indeed. Did it ever. <laughs> was it the first self-inflicted open heart surgery? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That would have helped if he had been a doctor there, Richard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It well. was not that. That's close. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Would it have made the uh, Guinness Book of World Records? I think it did. You I'm think sure it did? Oh. Is it something... I'm yeah. sure it's there for very... Two down, two to go, and it's in a lot of other records. And now Pat Collins. Doctor, is the fact that you live in Florida important to your secret? Uh, there's, a, there's a relationship. Yes. yes. Does it have to do with the water? No. No. Does it have to do with the good weather? No. no. Does it have to do with the terrific social life? You drank a lot in Palm Beach. No, no. Okay. Um, Au contraire. It, does it have anything to do with Cape Canaveral? Yes. Um, what, did it have anything to do with one particular launch? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, does it have to do, anything to do with the astronauts? Yes. Does it have anything to do with the service you perform for them? Yeah. Well, in a way, yeah, yes. yeah definitely. Oh, oh, we are three down, and Henry, it all rests with you. Yes. Henry, take it away. Um, <clears throat> I'm allowed one wild guess, right? You are indeed. Were you an astronaut? Yes. Don't I win anything? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, we have a little prize for you, but you've got to be more specific than that. He was an astronaut, but his secret is even... Well, now let's see. It was, were you the first civilian? No. That's right. All right. Were you on the... You couldn't have been on the first mission because that ain't you. Um, were you the first something? Uh, no, no, not the first. Uh, you were not the first. Time is up. I know you're, you're all going to wish you had it. Ladies and gentlemen, panel, let me introduce Dr. Captain Astronaut Edgar D. Mitchell, who walked on the moon. How quickly we forget, yeah, indeed. Exactly. Henry, I thought you had it nailed down. I and he doesn't you look like his pictures. Now, you look taller on the moon. Well, there's no, there's no gravity there, Pat. Very good. Dr. Stretch. Mitchell, you were lunar module pilot for Apollo 14, is that right? That's correct. Now, to, for equal time, who were the other members of your crew? Alan Shepard and Stuart Russo. And Alan Shepard played golf on that one, did That's he? That's right. Yeah. I'm actually the and first caddy on the The first caddy. <laughs> actually, he's the guy that piloted that, that made that fantastic landing. Uh, how many men, panel, out of curiosity? I'll ask you, uh, Pat, how many men do you think have walked on the moon? Pick a uh, number. Two. Henry? Eight. Elaine? Five. Richard? Four. Give him the answer, Ed. Twelve. There were twelve. Oh, you're wrong, you're 
<laughs> How does he know, in other words? You were the sixth man to do it, right. were you not? We were right in the middle of the pack. Yeah. And since that uh, magnificent accomplishment, you've sort of departed NASA, is that right? That's correct. How come? Oh, greener pastures, mm -hmm. uh, the program winding down a bit, uh, needing to find new things to do. And I think what Ed said uh, a while ago when we were talking was, after you've walked on the moon, what do you do for an encore? What, you, what, what are you doing now? What is your activity? Well, I have a consulting company that I'm mm -hmm. uh, working with right now, but I have two or three projects. I have a, a uh, research foundation that I formed. And, uh, did, this, so, did this walk of yours uh, affect <clears throat> your attitude at all? Oh, very much, your... yes. I think the, the uh, view of Earth from space mm -hmm. has certainly changed my attitude and made me realize how fragile this little planet is and how mm -hmm. much loving care we need to give it. And we better start so. And we better start. I think you touch on that. In your new book there, called Psychic Exploration. Is that right? Indeed, I do. Yes. There it is, right there. Thank you, Ed Mitchell, for being with us on I've Got a Secret. Thank you. Bill. Thank you. Next time you walk on the moon. Thank you. <laughs> Ed will be back to talk to us the next time he walks on the moon. Right now, we got a word for you. Hey, may we have our next contestant, please? Okay, tell everybody how you do. Tell everyone your name and where you're from. Kenita Moyer from Pricetown, Pennsylvania. Now, panel, this is 16-year-old. I want to get my uh, facts straight here. Mm -hmm. Kenita Moyer, she recently set a new world's record. The previous record, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, was held by a group of English schoolboys. Is that right? Yes. Now, Kenita broke that record all by herself, by 66 feet. Now, Kenita, you whisper to me while our audience at home gets an idea to... Move the world on the scarf. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. This, this concerns something she did. Henry Morgan, we will, if you would let us, begin with you. Did you, start, did you say something about feet? Yes. A number of feet? Yes, she broke the existing record by 66 feet. Is that yes. right? Yes. Yeah, 66. Ha! Anita, were you on land at the time? Yes. Were you um, in a vehicle? No. Were you just using your own self? Yeah. <laughs> she, there were other it's, things involved. There, was a, yeah. there were other things involved. And uh, she was in several places during all this. <laughs> Did you move a number of feet? No, no. no. That wouldn't be okay. important to the. Did you? Well, I said, did you use? Did you? Did I ask you? Did you use some device or some something yes. else? Yes. Yeah. You did. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Did it? Uh, did you throw it? No. Did you blow it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's one down. Three to go. Elaine Joyce. I blew it. Okay, um, oh, now... I blew it. <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> um, let me, uh, do, is this a sport that English schoolboys play? No. No. It I think English schoolboys, if when they do this, would do it only for a lark. It, oh, <laughs> Miss School. No. <laughs> no. No, this depends on what a lark likes, I guess. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, do you use uh, any type of bat or anything like that, or any uh, ball? No. A trampoline? No. <laughs> do you do it on the ground? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you stay on the ground when you do it all the time? Yes. And that's two down and two to go. <laughs> Richard Dawson? Yeah, Anita, um, a favorite uh, hobby of English school children is throwing teachers off of cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that and beat them by 66 feet? <laughs> Are the feet we're talking about measurements, or do they have toes on them? No, it's measurements. They're measurement feet. Oh. <laughs> that was a good thought, though. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right, did you do it here in America? Yes. Do you wear a special costume to do this? No. No equipment at all? She did use equipment, yes. Yeah. She did use equipment. And if you stop to think of what English schoolboys might do to get in the Guinness Book of Records, it might help you, because they'll do anything. Yeah. Well, it overturned <laughs> two of our governments, so I'd rather not get into that. <laughs> Girls, does Christine Keeler ring a bell? Oh, yes. <laughs> and more than that, yes. if I might say. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Okay, darling, uh, you wore... A yellow Beautiful. ribbon. Beautifully uh, done. Rest You're, my case. Beautifully done, Richard. Three down, one to go. Our honor rests with you, Pat. Oh, you've rested it with the wrong person. <laughs> uh, Kanita, is this considered a, an athletic 
achievement? No. No. Is it considered uh, like crazy, fun, uh, a hobby kind of thing? Mm, yeah, I think so. It is. Do you walk while you do this? No. no. <laughs> Could, do you but she jump? No. No. <laughs> Uh, do you do anything out of the ordinary in terms of how you use your body? No. No. Time is up. Panel, you've, you've, in the true to the tradition of I've got a secret panels, you've blown another one. You wanted to take, you wanted to guess, Elaine? Could Could I, I take Elaine a wild you guess? You may take a wild guess. Did you build an enormous ice cream sundae? Sensationally, but not, no. Oh! <laughs> Kanita is a knitter. She knitted the world's oh! longest scarf. That's what oh! Long, long start. How long, how long did it take you? 51 weeks. Okay, now, how long was the scarf again? I know you recall. Yeah. The actual in feet, how long was it? 504 feet, 10 inches. Holy ma- Now, Elaine, would you, would you help us out? Would you come center stage, please? Okay. We want you to help us show the audience what the world's longest, a little further down. There it is. Catch it if you would, Elaine, please. Oh, Don't let it hit the floor. <laughs> The world's longest scarf. Ah! Hey, Pat, why don't you come and help Elaine? Because she's in a little trouble. <laughs> don't let it hit the floor. Whatever you do, we'll watch. Oh! Wait a minute. It's still up. That's it. Right? Whatever you do, don't let it keep the scarf continues to come down there. Henry uh, and Richard, you want to supervise? I guess you don't want to get involved with this. No. There's some on the floor. Don't let it uh, hit the floor. It's on we the promise. Floor. We Bill, promise not to. I think this would explain why we lost India. I think so. <laughs> it's on the floor again, Elaine. I'm sorry. No, it's on All the right, floor. I'm sorry. Oh. Thank you, Kanita. We'll be back after this work. Right Panel, we would like you to meet a special guest. Let me introduce a man for whom I have tremendous respect, Mr. Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank oh, you. How do you do? How are Rodney, you? Rodney, I do respect you and always have, no matter what those other people say. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, it's nice having you. We thank you. Who is the, the fellow in the band over there, standing in the middle, without any instrument, whatever? Well, he's a gentleman I brought over. His name is Vance Kovic, mm -hmm. and he plays a musical instrument. He does. And you know I'm always looking out for new talent for my nightclub, and I thought he was just excellent and needed some national television exposure, so I brought him over here to uh, play his instrument. You, well, know? you brought him to the right place, Rodney, and thank you. What, what does he play? What instrument? Well, that's my secret, you know. Oh, well, that's certainly I'll, fair. If you whisper his secret to me, we'll... Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know why not. Panel, the secret concerns the instrument that Vance Kolvig is going to play. We'll start the questioning with Richard Dawson. Richard? Okay. Uh, Rodney, does uh, Vance have the instrument with him now? At all times, oh, yeah. yes. Never without it? Never without it, never without it. Is it in plain view at this moment? Yeah. Is it a uh, brass instrument? No, no. Percussion? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll go along with that a little bit, yeah. Yeah, percussion. Does he have it with him? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's there. Oh, yeah. Don't you see it? I don't know. Is it a part of him? Uh, I would guess so. I guess huh? we have to say yes. yes. Is it? Fine. Oh, one down, three to go. And Pat, what did that do for you? Uh, oh, it made me want to leave. Uh, <laughs> Rodney, does Vance's uh, musical ability have anything to do with a part of his body? Mm -hmm. I would guess so, yes. Mm -hmm. It does. Well, I guess it's true of every musician. That was a dumb question. No, no, I thought it, it was no. <laughs> Will he make probably. the sound he's going to make by using a part of his body? That would make a little mm -hmm. Yes, yes. It's contained in his anatomy as it stands before us now. Sure. As it rises, okay. stands before you now, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to probably get arrested before this week is over. Let me see. Let's start above the neck. That's right. safe, isn't it? It sure. certainly is safe. <laughs> Is that where the secret is? Does he play something above the neck? That's the mm -hmm. secret, all right, mm -hmm. above the neck. Yeah. 
Two down, two to go, Henry Martin. <laughs> well, you, uh, you were there, really. Uh, it's above it, it, but does he hit himself on the head? He indeed does. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna do it for you right now, okay? Okay, Vance, right, are you ready? Right Vance now. Colvig, everyone. Musically as exciting since they raided the casino theater in Pittsburgh, right, Pennsylvania. Right. Can we get him back for an encore? Oh, uh -huh. you kidding? That'll knock himself out. Forget about that. <laughs> now, I have another protege of mine I brought along, too. You have another? Another oh. soloist and musically, really, this man is tops. All right, and, uh, bring sure him on because this. your men are so good. What you right, oh, this yeah. is Mr. John Toomey, and I'm sure you'll appreciate uh, ah. John Toomey's instrument. I'm going to do John Philip Sousa's Stars and Stripes Forever tonight. Ronnie, you are a super talent scout. As you find <laughs> talent like this, would you bring them to us and I've got a secret? Always, always. Whenever I find something unusual and different, I think of this show always. Thank you. John Toomey, I, I have to ask you, John, uh, you, you do that so well. How long have you been working on that? Oh, about 25 years. And, and what, what, is your normal, what is your normal calling? My normal calling? Yeah. Well, I, I call this a manualist, but I'm generally a lawyer. <laughs> do you win many? 
All the time. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's all we have time for. Thank you, John. Thank you, Rodney. And thank you, panel. Elaine Joyce, nice to have you with us. Mitch Dawson. Pat Collins, thank you. Henry Morgan, it's always the same. We'll see you next time on I've Got a Secret. Goodbye. I've Got a Secret is a Mark Goodson, Bill Dodman production.